coffee break with me. Woo! Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. How are you today? Today I am decked out in like subby gear. You guys are the sweetest. You send me like the coolest stuff. My shirt. It says I need an all day coffee break. I need like an all year coffee break. Um, I was actually getting ready to head out to run some errands and stuff. And I started to realize, I was like, why am I doing this particular makeup look? Like what is what is the reasoning behind my selection, right? And so I started to think about it because I mean, everything that I do is with intention. You know, there's always a reason behind why I do what I do. And if you hear really loud noises, my dogs are eating right there. <laughs> you guys, they need to have like their own room and like commit to it because they're literally everywhere with me in this house. And sometimes I'm like, I'm just trying to get some work done. Can you guys like turn down the cute for a second? <laughs> so um, the products that I use are very specific. The reason that I use them is very specific. So I totally kind of like started to analyze the reason for my choices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through this get ready with me as to why I'm picking the things I'm picking, why I'm using the things I'm using, um, what their purpose is, etc, etc, etc. So um, if you are interested in a like first date type makeup tutorial, then this is for you. Or it could be like a back to school makeup tutorial or a, I don't know, daytime meeting makeup tutorial. It's something that's just going to enhance your natural beauty. It's going to be very low maintenance. And if for some reason or whatever, your face gets wet or you rub your face or whatever, it's gonna be a makeup look that fades away gracefully and will look awesome. So the first thing I'm gonna start with is the Veil Mineral Primer from Hourglass. This is important because it has sunscreen. It's important because it does have um, optical blurring. Um, and it's also cool because it creates sort of like a seal or a barrier on your skin. So whenever you decide to put on top, it's almost going to be like a sealant or like a sandwich. It's just gonna hold on to that product really, really well. And I apply that all over my face, including areas you wouldn't expect like eyelids, underneath the eyes, cl up close to your ears, down your neck. So I use about one and a half pumps and that's kind of a lot of product. So um, don't overuse products. I feel like a lot of times that's like a common error that we do is we think more is more when it comes to makeup, but it's actually the complete opposite. It's less is more and less will give you better results or optimum results. Then we're gonna go in with a corrector and for that I'm gonna need just a regular synthetic domed brush. And the corrector is important because it's going to cancel out any of that like purple or blueness from under your eyes if you suffer from panda eyes like I do. If you don't have panda eyes or you don't have dark circles or you don't look tired, you could completely skip this step. It's not important at all. Um, but it's really helpful for me, especially because I've been running on really little sleep just because of my workload and my schedule and everything that I have going on and, you know, being super social and all that stuff. So. I'm sacrificing my sleep, which I would not recommend. It is not a good thing, don't do it. Then I'm gonna go in with a really light to medium, light to medium, almost moisturizer based foundation type product. So I would say like a light coverage foundation, a light to medium coverage foundation, a BB cream, a CC cream. You could even use foundation concentrate drops mixed into a sunscreen or a moisturizer. Um, the reason that I like to use a product like this is because it's going to make sure that you look like what you look like. Does that make sense? So let's say that this is for school. You want a school makeup look. So you don't wanna look super done up. You don't want it to look like you're wearing a mask. You don't wanna look flawless. You just want to look good. You know what I'm saying? There's like a big difference between looking completely super flawless, like you're wearing a fake face, um, or a filter, or from looking natural. I'm very, very, very pro um, flaunting your skin, whether that's freckles, hyperpigmentation, um, I don't know, a scar, something that you have, because I feel like at the end of the day, that's a part of you, you know what I mean? And there's gonna be occasions where you can't use full coverage foundation. And I feel like when you get to the point where you just completely and fully embrace and are happy with just the way you look, um, I don't know. 
just a lot easier to be easy on yourself. You know what I'm saying? So before I, when I started my channel, I used to be super gung ho about everything had to be full coverage. If I'm going to go through the work of doing makeup, it's going to be full on full coverage. You know what I'm saying? And now I've, I've like slowly learned the beauty and the benefits of doing like a really lightweight product. So for example, the reason that I wear a product like this on a date is because you can actually see what my skin looks like. So it doesn't matter if we go on a really fancy, fancy dinner date or if we go to the lake and I don't wear makeup my skin is always gonna look like my skin it's not going to be like are you sick were you crying you know what I'm saying like I remember when I was younger and I used to do the full-on full face of makeup and then I would go to work with no makeup on because I just was like you know I'm gonna let my skin breathe today I would get the is everything okay and so now that I've just embraced what I look like and Monday through Friday, I'm not wearing makeup. You guys, literally, a few days ago, I went on a first date with no makeup on. Nothing. Not a stitch of makeup. Not a single stitch of makeup. Just me and my face. And I do, on my online profile, have pictures of me with no makeup on because that's what I look like. You know what I'm saying? I've just gotten to this point in my life where I'm like, this is me. I love me. I look great. I love it. I love the freckles on my nose. You know, I love um, the, the mole that's on my lip and the mole that's on the side of my cheek. And I do still break out, whatever. It's a sign of youth or hormones or it's a sign that I'm alive. <laughs> so I just kind of roll with it. And I use makeup to look as much of like me as I look. Does that make sense? Have you ever seen someone where they put makeup on and they completely transform? Mm. Here's a good example, like drag makeup. It's so powerful. You can take someone looking like figure A, they do drag makeup and they look like a completely different person, 100% altogether. Then I'm gonna go in with a um, concealer that is more of the my skin tone, so not a corrector, just a regular potted concealer that's the shade of my skin tone. And I'll just dot that on areas where I have like um, either a breakout, like I have two breakouts on my forehead that will not move away. I have literally evicted them like 72 times in the last 24 hours and they don't wanna leave my face. So um, I'll just take like a heavier concealer like that. Um, we did the face product. Now I'm gonna go in with a concealer. I'm just gonna use a lighter concealer. I realize this is not my color. This is way too light for me right now, so I'm gonna use the littlest bit, but this is just gonna be to brighten underneath my eyes. But like I said, just a little tiny bit, and then we're also gonna use that as um, eyelid primer. So whatever's left over, we'll just kind of bump it all around this area. So like I was telling you guys, why a lightweight uh, face product? Um, why the primer that I'm using? So the primer that I'm using is cool because it locks the product onto your face and it prevents it from moving around. Um, so it wears off nicely. If I were to go up to someone or like on my date and I lean my head on their shoulder, I'm not gonna transfer makeup product onto them which for me is really cool. Like I would be so embarrassed if like a guy goes home after we have a date and like half of my face is like imprinted on their shoulder, you know, like blush, bronzer, lipstick, all the foundation. Like that would be so weird. Like a, a, like a face imprint. Um, so I just wanna look as much as me as possible. I wanna use products that are going to wear away nicely. Um, and then I also wanna use products that um, are just going to highlight or emphasize like my natural features so that if I decide to roll up on a date with no makeup on, I'll basically look the same. You know what I'm saying? So that's really important to me. And that's the other like lesson or importance of like back to school makeup. Like if you're gonna wear makeup to school, design a makeup look for yourself that you like, that's low maintenance, that doesn't require you to carry your makeup bag around at school, or that if you get yucky or sweaty, or if you need to like, I don't know, break it down during physical education, or you have like a science lab and you have to put on goggles or whatever, it's gonna be something that's not going to burden you. You know, it's not something that you're gonna have to like maintain or make sure that it's okay and it's not like smudging all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Like make your life easy. Now that I look at myself um, in the reflection, this concealer is way too light. I really need to either fade my tan, which is weird. A lot of people have asked me like if it's a self tanner. I'm like, no, I was in the sun for like an hour once and this is what happens. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, uh, 
I, I need to find a concealer that is um, still brightening, but not as white. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with a translucent powder. This is important because it's going to seal everything in. So I use two different techniques. The first one is my damp beauty blender and I push that into the skin where I wanna make sure that I lock the product, that no matter what I do, it's not going anywhere. So like I push the powder in to my under eye and to my eyelid. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. So take translucent powder, push it in to the under eye and the eyelid. Make sure you remove any signs of like creasing or um, that crepiness any powder buildup, you want the littlest bit. So you're pushing it in to kind of coat, but then you're also pushing it in to remove any excess. Same thing, I'm gonna go on my forehead lines so that I don't get any, um, what's that word? Like when the foundation sinks into your fine lines, like I don't want that. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of like bumping it and pushing it out of the way. Then I'm gonna go in with just a fluffy powder brush. This is my It Brushes for Ulta. Um, favorite brush. I did a whole little Instagram video on some of these brushes from it, um, from it Cosmetics. So It Cosmetics has a line of brushes that's strictly just for Ulta. Designed for Ulta, same high quality, a lot more affordable, and they're really great. I really like them. Um, and then I'm just going to go in and put on powder and then dust off the excess at the same time. Make sure you bring the powder off up to your ears and down your neck so that you're sealing in all of the places where you apply your foundation product. I told you guys, um, I don't think I mentioned that I use Naked Skin, um, Urban Decay's Naked Skin One and Done. And the reason I use this is because it's a primer, it's a BB cream or a CC cream. Um, it has SPF um, and it also has um, these like blur blurring or optical spheres that are going to kind of give that blurring effect on the skin. So I really like to stack the deck. If my moisturizer has blurring spheres, my primer has blurring spheres, and then my face product has blurring spheres, I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk around looking like a softened, like a skin softening filter, which is great, right? But if I do get wet or splashed or whatever, or someone touches my face and they're like, oh Danny, you're so beautiful, you're the love of my life, it's gonna take off my makeup, but it's gonna take it off gracefully, and you're not even gonna be able to tell because we're wearing a really lightweight product um and your skin like your normal skin is already showing so it's no big deal you know what i'm saying okay then we're gonna work on our bronzer or our contour powder and for that i'm going to take charlotte tilbury's bronze and glow a real techniques setting brush and i'm going to carve out my cheekbones so go in with a smaller more precise face brush like this one and carve out your cheekbones and then go in with a chubbier brush and you're going to um, just soften any harshness or harsh lines of this uh, bronzing powder. So I'll use the Real Techniques Multitask Brush and I don't think you can find this product anymore. Or rather, I think you can, but I think that it, they changed it. The handles are like a different pink and I think the actual brush is a little bit different. I tried to buy it again and unless I can find it in like the first edition, I don't think I'm going to buy it again. It's a really good brush, especially for bronzer. Um, I don't like to use really, really big brushes for bronzer because I don't bronze my face. I just use it for like a contour powder. Now for the blush, this is kind of where you're going to decide what looks better on you. Like peachy tones, mauvey tones, or pink tones, right? So for me, when I'm going on a date, I want to look, I don't know, I don't want to look sexy. I just want to look kind of sweet, you know, cute and sweet. So I tend to go for pinky, shimmery, mauvey shades. They just make me feel a lot prettier. If I feel pretty, I feel like I look pretty. You know what I'm saying? So the blush that I always reach for when I want to feel or look pretty is Rockateur from Benefit. Um, it looks like this. It's a really beautiful, glowy, glowy, super glowy, mauvey pink. And that's going to go on the apples of the cheeks. And then we're just going to kind of bring it back up to like towards the back of the face. Um, I love this blush. I'm totally going to run out very soon. I use it all the time. It's just such a beautiful, gentle, delicate blush. And it has a slight sheen to it, but it's not shimmery. There's no glitter. Um, so it's super flattering 
and it's a really beautiful blush that you can build up. So this is a really good asset to your collection because you could have it as an everyday blush and you could just do a really light wash for like the apples of your cheeks for school, work, whatever. Or you can go in a little bit heavier when you actually really chisel out those, those cheekbones. Um, you know, and, and you want to emphasize um, like a more dramatic or like you do a black smoky eye. It's a really beautiful color because you can build it up and it just looks absolutely stunning. Um, now we're going to go in with highlighter. I like to create a theme. So I tie in all the colors. So on my cheeks, I did like a pink, like a mauvey satiny pink. I'm going to go in with a really, really light, 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 light pink highlighter. This is Charming Pink from Laura Geller and I'm going to take my baby brush from Senna Cosmetics and I'm going to start right below my temple, right across the top, like the highest portion of my cheek and then bring it down right on top of the apple so that when the light hits it, you just look like you're glowing. Same thing on the other side at the very top, right below the temple. Bring it over to the top highest point of your cheekbone and then just dust it a little bit on the apples of your cheeks. Now, if you have really big pores, if you're self-conscious, if you have like acne pox or like um, just any sort of like acne scarring on your cheeks, I wouldn't recommend it in this area because it will highlight that, it will emphasize it. Or if you already have oily skin, I would say avoid this area altogether. Just focus it on the highest points of your face. And then of course you guys know we got to get it all up in this area. Do you see how I'm like making eye contact? I'm not even looking in the mirror. <laughs> so dust it. I like to dust it on the tip of my nose. I don't know. I just feel it looks sweet and cute and kind of unicorny. But that's just because I'm corny. Dun -dun. You know what? I, you see what I did there? Whatever, you guys. Just whatever. Um, and then I go in with my blush brush and do just one dust over it. In case, you know, I did way too much highlighter, it's just going to kind of blend layer nicely. Okay, now um, we're going to do brows. And I'm just going to do that off camera because it's really nothing special. Okay, you guys, I had to go do something with my hair because it was driving me insane. I didn't want to curl it today, but I'm not sure I'm feeling this whole flat iron situation. It's looking a little choppy and trendy. And if you hear severe panting, it's my Westie. I feel like I always have to like excuse my dogs and their rude behavior. <laughs> for eyes, super, super basic. I'm going to take a palette from Makeup Forever. This is volume four. Um, it is called uh, Palette Nine Artist Shadow in volume four. Um, I'm just going to take two colors in here. You guys ready for this? It's so basic. So we're going to take this color here. This is like a matte vanilla, not anything stark white. Not anything with any shimmer, nothing with any sort of like, hey, hey, look at me. We're basically just trying to just brighten underneath the brow without way too much, just in the most subtle way possible, right? So this is my Dell M778. It's one of my favorite brushes ever. So we're just going to do that. And then we're going to take a large blending brush. And it's usually the brush that I use as my transition shade or for my transition shade, the E55, E40. Um, another good option is Morphe's uh, M511, except this one hurts, so I tried to not use it as often. It, it's kind of painful. Another good option is the It Brushes for Ulta in 105, another one of my favorites. So we're gonna go in with this one and this color here. This is like a taupey neutral shade. So think about like one of your favorite transition shades and that's going to go on the lid and then you're just going to bring it up and you're just blending. So let's do the other side. Again, you'll start on the lid, start on the lid, focus on the lid, focus on the lid, focus on the lid, and then just kind of bring it up. Look in the mirror, see how your reflection looks. You just want to look like you have a little bit of shading, a little bit of shadowing. You don't want the color to be too obvious. You just want it to look shadowy. You know what I'm saying? Like just a little bit like, oh yeah, look, there's, there's some shadowing. So again, like I told you, all of the colors, all of the products that I'm picking for this tutorial or for the purpose, the purpose or the point of this type of makeup look are for a reason. So 
For me, this is a very neutral transition shade. It's similar to my skin tone. It's going to create a little bit of depth in the eyes. It's not going to make my face look as like uh, sparse or bare because I do have a lot of like eyelid space. So it's just, you know, kind of just creating a little bit of, of shadowing, a little bit of depth of definition. After that, this step is actually really important and I'm not a fan of curling my lashes. You guys have seen all my tutorials. I never curl my lashes, but when we have this little bit going on in the eyes, we want to take as much help as we can get. So stack that deck as much as you can or as you want. A lot of us have issues with like um, eyelashes that grow downward. Some of us don't. I have a cousin that has the most amazing eyelashes. It looks like she has extensions, like eyelash extensions. She doesn't even use mascara. I was like, really? Are you serious? Are you serious right now? You don't use mascara? This is crazy. So I, uh, I curl my lashes. And then I go in with a couple of coats of mascara and that is it. Like I don't do any eyeliner. I don't do any other eyeshadow on the lower portion of my eyes. I don't do anything because like I said, this is a perfect look for a first date or for school or for work or if you're like a, I don't know, if you need to get ready really quickly in the morning, it's a good option. Um, so it's a very low maintenance strategic type makeup look. So if I'm on a first date, I wanna look like how I'm actually gonna look if I show up on a date without any makeup on. If I'm going to school, I want a look that's going to be low maintenance and that I don't need to upkeep throughout the day. If I'm going to, um, I don't know, you know, it just, they're products that aren't gonna disappoint you. They're products that are going to fade away gracefully. They're not products that are gonna sabotage you. Okay, now for lips. Uh, for lips, I'm gonna do, like I said, stick to your theme, whether it's a peach theme, a coral theme, a pink, pink theme, mauve theme, whatever you decide. Um, my favorite go-to combo is, well, let me be honest, usually I just go in with MAC Modesty. Like, that's it, that's all I use. But if you're trying to give your lips a little bit more definition, or if your lips are a little bit narrow or smaller and you wanna make them look a little bit juicier or more plump, what I do is I go in with Max Soar and I just line the center portion of my lips. So, let me show you. So I'll just do a line on the middle portion of my bottom lip and I'll kind of line it or outline it towards the bottom. So not on the actual line, I'm overlining just a little bit. And I'll do the same thing at the top um, on opposite sides of the cupid's bow towards the middle, but I'll go straight across the cupid's bow because I want a little bit of fullness here as opposed to like the sharp V of a cupid's bow. I, for some reason, I that's not really my style. I don't like I don't like the really high definition of a cupid's bow, so I just run straight across it like this. I know it looks totally weird, but once you go in with lipstick, you blend it out and it makes a big difference. So then I'm gonna go in with MAC Modesty. And there you have it. So basically, Choose your products with purpose. Make sure that they serve a purpose for your look. What we're trying to do is we're trying to emphasize your natural beauty. You want to use products that are going to be long lasting. So essentially you're picking products that are low maintenance, that are going to highlight your beauty and that don't require any upkeep. And if you were to, I don't know, have a really hot date and they're touching your face, it won't matter because if your makeup does rub off or go away, there's gonna be just skin left and that skin that was kind of already showing. Or if you get invited on a second date and it's like on, on the lake or to on a hike or something, you don't have to wear makeup because you've always looked this way. Same thing for school. School's super important. You wanna look presentable, you wanna look cute, you wanna do your makeup, do your makeup, but don't set yourself up for something that's gonna feel like a chore. You know what I'm saying? Now, disclaimer. If your life is makeup, if you like wearing 40 pounds of makeup, if you feel gorgeous with fake eyelashes every day, that is great, embrace it, love it. This is basically my opinion as to why I do this makeup for a first date, like the reasoning behind it, or why I would do my makeup like this if I was in school. So if you would do full on glam with lashes and glitter and adhesive and everything for school or on a date, 
awesome, great, that's totally your style. I just kind of took the opportunity of sharing like the reason why I do my makeup this way. And even though it is a way of empowering you guys and uh, sharing, you know, my realization of how confident I am in my bare skin, it's also a really lazy or practical way of doing your makeup because you can get it done in less than 10 minutes. So don't share my secrets. Anyway, so that's it. All right, you guys, long story short, this is my first date makeup tutorial. <laughs> All the products will be listed and linked in the description box below. I love you guys so much, and you know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, or learned something, please give me a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye, guys.